Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Japanese Politics 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about the upper house. Japan is made up of a bicameral legislature, the Diet, consisting of the upper house and the lower house. We talked about the lower house last week. We're going to talk about the upper house this week, Michael. Well, okay. So we ha it's called the upper house, and it's given a bit of a, a, a larger, sta better status. Its formal name is the House of Counselors, and that sets it off against the formal name of the, the lower house, which is the House of Representatives. So the House of Counselors, with two L's mm -hmm. and an O, uh, your right. autocorrect will always try to People change People misspell it. it all the time. Yeah, the That's autocorrect right. tries to change it, but it's C-O-U-N-L-C-I-L-L-O-R-S. The House of Counselors is the descendant of the House of Peers, which was a appointed body of the nobles and worthies of the imperial realm of imperial Japan. Most, mostly aristocrats, right? Mostly the aristocrats. Peers. They were they were landowners. They were landowners, but all, more importantly, uh, many of them were former samurai who had been given very high titles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that there was, in the House of Peers, a force against the democratic forces represent of the House of Representatives. Right, because in the Meiji Restoration, it was, I mean, the, the, the class, the five classes of Japanese society was kind of swept Those away. Were completely swept and, and away. And they had to bring in something else and to parcel out, you know, we know you're offended that you had to give up your sword and stuff like that. We're going to give you this role in Japanese society. The, 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 the peerage was largely restricted to the people who won in the Meiji Restoration. So, mm -hmm. Uh, and of the rest of the samurai, good luck here, your Shizoku. Uh, and many of them got elected to the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Many of the losers in the power struggles established political parties, and they became the opposition to the government right. because the government established the constitution, ran an election, and all these disaffected uh, former samurai got elected. Right. So one of the things that, that foreign observers love about Japan is that although there, there's history and tradition, it's morphed into something else, but you can still see the echoes and the remnants of where it came from. That's correct. So in the case of the, the bicameral legislature, the House of Peers was supposed to be the break on the popular passions of the House of Representatives and to be a counterweight that thinks long term about society. Mm -hmm. And that was carried forward by the U.S. occupation uh, in the establishment of the House of Counselors. The original House of Counselors was a nationwide election of worthy people. And mm -hmm. so that the first election that takes place under the new constitution uh, elects just a panoply of academics, jur form journalists, all kinds of social pe activists to be, again, a break on the passions of the uh, of the House of Representatives, but they they call themselves the House of Worthies. Uh -huh. Right. So that was the original formation, and in order to give it institutional stability, we should say it's very different from the House of Reps in terms of its electoral re calendar. Right. Yeah. You know, a House of Representatives person uh, has a term for four years and frequently never made serves the whole four years because a diet is dissolved. Mm -hmm. The upper house, the house of counselors, cannot be dissolved. And it's on a, a six-year six year term. term. Right? So if you become, and indeed the term that uh, is used is senator. You are a senator of the house of counselors, which is exactly the same as the US senator and the same actual term, six years. Mm -hmm. uh, but rather than the US system where every two years there is an election here in Japan, it's every three years. So half of the House is elected on one election, and then three years later, the other half mm -hmm. will be elected. And they are on a continuous cycle, and the elections usually happen in, in, in mid July. It is a, a time when it's warm. <laughs> it's, it's not often the best of times in terms of elections for the physically for the people involved, but nevertheless, it's, it's a regular, predictable part of the government, right. as opposed to the House of Reps, which is always on the knife edge of being dissolved. Right. And every once in a while, the prime minister can manage the closing of the House of Representatives to coincide with the 
regular three year cycle of the House of Council. That happens very rarely when we have a double election, uh, but frequently uh, there is always talk about it right. because it represents for the, the ruling coalition a chance to, to double down on, fall, it, right. on its advantages. Uh, but there have actually been relatively few. Right. Uh, it's just never, the, 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 the calendars of the two have never really meshed bet between the calendars of the of prime minister and his political needs and this regular cycle. Let's talk a little bit more about the composition of the House of Councillors. It used to be that they were wealthy. Uh, they usually had some sort of a royal connection to them. And nowadays, uh, that seems to be rather distant from what the reality is. Well, the, it, it's gone in phases. It had the House of Worthy's academic, uh, lawyerly bent for a few elections, mm -hmm. but soon it became a political animal as well, reflecting the party strengths of the, the, the House of Representatives. But somewhere along the line, it also became the joke house mm -hmm. because basically it is a very weak body. It, there's very little that it can do to stop the actions of the House of Representatives. It can, on occasion, kill legislation, but there have to be a very a set of circumstances and bad management of the House of Representatives right. uh, votes and calendar for that to happen. Most of the time it's there just as a debating society. Mm -hmm. And because it's mostly been just a debating society, it attracts, well, right. interesting candidates. Right, well, since the election districts for the senators is larger, the popularity of the individuals is really kind of the defining point of them getting elected. I mean, it's, it's a defining point for others too in the House of Representatives, but it seems like in the House of Counselors, this is really critical, the, the, the popularity of the singer or the wrestler or the whatever, uh, they're the ones that shoot to, to fame and as a result become senators for the, the nation. Yeah, there, there are two systems that allow for election in the House of Counselors, just as there are two systems in the House of Representatives. There is the very interesting districts which are much larger, as you say. Mm -hmm. the, uh, most of them conform to a prefecture. And so you really do have to have a name, you have to have recognition. You can't be some family that's been in charge of one small district for a very long time and it's electoral uh, and has its own little bailiwick. Right. You have to have some kind of name recognition. And that means that in, in the past it would be perhaps some relationship to the daimyo from that prefecture, from that sort of there, there are all kinds geography. Of, they're just big people. And right. Each, and unlike the House of Representatives, where a district has but a single representative coming out of it under the, right. the 1993 system, the House of Counselors still has you know, one-person districts, still has two, three, four, and Tokyo has six uh, per election cycle. Right. And so their num total number of counselors elected from Tokyo is actually 12. Uh, so that there is always fr a framework for a comedian, mm -hmm. for a uh, singer, you know, for a pro wrestler. Or an uh, author, or best-selling author. author. To, to find a place in the districts. But there's even a crazier system in the proportional. The proportional, which now, is I, just so interesting. It's just, it's, it is, uh, the, the way that it's worked out is that there's a party list for each of the parties. But the party list is malleable. If you can get on somebody's party list, you can get elected as that party's representative, even if you don't believe a darn thing that party stands for. Because the order that a person is taken off the party list is not established by the party. Mm -hmm. It's by the how many votes it, that person gets in, right. Right, in a write-in candidacy. Mm -hmm. So you, different parties use this in different ways. The LDP, what it does, is it gives its party, it puts on its party list representatives of industries and representatives of professional organizations. There's the, the senator, who, the person who will be senator for the dentists, mm -hmm. the senator for the med techs, the senator for the postmasters, the senator for any kind of, of, of organization will have its group, its, its senator. And let's say you're a pharmacist. All the pharmacists get letters 
from the National Pharmacy Association saying the LDP is running X as vote for our guy, uh, the senator for pharmacists. Right, vote for him, and they. The the weird thing is they actually they go do. in sure. and they vote pharmacist. Mm -hmm. That's the way the LDP does it. The the old DPJ, which was the the labor to the conservative of the of the the uh, of the LDP, if you look at it in like a British politics situation, they would give their slots to union representatives. There was the Panasonic okay. Union, there was the Auto Workers Union, and they would be taken. Their members mm -hmm. would vote for okay okay auto workers this is our senator you vote for him write his name down and they did that as well that's a really skewed system isn't it because not everybody is popular at any one particular point in time well but but for some people they they're able to get elected in that way for example uh imai of the group speed mm -hmm. the okinawa music group right they the ldp recruited her because they knew okay she could probably pull in around three hundred thousand write-in votes that's more than enough mm -hmm. to, to to win a place because then in the big sharing out of the proportional votes that happens right the ldp is going to have oh 21 spaces or 21 seats and then it's and all that, that's nationwide. That's nation. It's a nationwide thing. Right. So that's the, uh, the this. It's a, a wild, mm -hmm. open system that allows for, you know, that's where this is where you find the professional right. wrestlers. This is where you find all of the uh, the freak candidates. <laughs> and there was for a time, uh, people got sick of it. And indeed, the house it of was Council, it was worse before, wasn't it? It was maybe worse before. Uh, yeah, in the nineties. We saw the lowest levels of participation by voters in ever in right. national politics. House of Reps has never descended to the depths that the House of Councillors has, mm -hmm. because the House of Councillors was really seen as a joke. But then something very interesting. There is what's called the Nejire Kokkai, where the right. House of Councillors is controlled by a different party than the House of Reps. And in 1989, starting from 1989, and for several time, most of the time until uh, this 2016 election that we've had, there have been, the LDP has mostly been in charge of the House of Reps, but other parties have controlled the House of Councillors. And when those two are not in sync, the House of Reps has to be incredibly disciplined to maintain legislation, to pass the budget on time, to mm -hmm. pass everything. They have within the, the mechanisms the ability to just ignore the House of Councillors. But for some reason, especially in the 90s, they didn't have their act together, at least the leaders of the LDP who were supposedly in charge of the, of the program. And so many times, so many initiatives ran smack into the House of Councillors and died there. Right. And that possibility of stopping the juggernaut mm -hmm. actually reignited interest in the House of Councillors because suddenly it was serious again. And it's pretty much maintained its serious demeanor ever since. Nijiri Kokai, we need to describe that just a little bit. There are several ways you can vote when you're in a, a plenary session. When, when the senators are voting, you can do a hand vote, you can push the button to vote, you can also take a tab, yes, no, and walk up to the, um, to the, the podium as and cast your vote. As slowly as you want to. And and just slowly, 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 the, the ox walk, right? right? The, you can, you can, there's so many ways that the House of Councillors can gum up the system, mm -hmm. but fundamentally, constitutionally, the House of Representatives is where the decisions are made. Okay. But yep. there are some issues, particularly, we have this year the question of whether Kuroda will, Mr. Kuroda will continue on as the, the governor of the Japan, Bank of Japan. Right. That Bank of Japan position has to be okayed by the House of Councillors. It's not, there's no way for the House of Representatives to override. The House of Representatives can override legislation. If two thirds of the members of the House of Representatives vote for a legislation, piece of legislation that was rejected or ignored by the House of Councillors, it can pass, mm -hmm. but not appointments. There, it may, makes a difference. And indeed, Mr. Kuroda's pre predecessor, Shirakawa, was picked precisely because the House of Councillors kept rejecting LDP suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not entirely powerless. 
It cannot throw out the government. The House of Representatives can have a House has, can have a vote of no confidence right. and overthrow the government. The House of Counselors it has a similar thing called censure, which has zero effect. Though many very often when a, a minister does get censured, the next time he, he's one of the ones that's switched out mm -hmm. in the cabinet uh, reshuffle because he's got a black mark on on his or her his or her record. So. The House of Counselors is not irrelevant. Right. It also has one other great aspect to it, in that it's the it's the progressive house. In we have two hundred and forty two members. Oh, that makes sense, though, doesn't it? That it's the progressive house because it's not as really deeply seeped or bound into everyday politics as the House of Representatives. It, it has a certain flexibility, and it's where women are making their inroads. Mm -hmm. The House of Reps is. And the inter Japan's international reputation there is is absolutely correct. With nine percent women in the House of Representatives, Japan's uh, lower house is an embarrassment. Well, it's 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 a hard environment to survive in, isn't well, it's, it? And and the, with legacy politicians just eating up space and their families just sitting in seats for generations after mm -hmm. generations, it's a very difficult place to get into. House of Counselors compared to that. 20%? 20%. That's and, huge. And, and, and growing. And it, it, it is a place where women, I mean, Ren Ho, the head of the DP, is a House of Counselors member. And frequently, House of Counselors uh, is where you find the powerful women's voices. Right. Whereas in the House of Reps, the women may be elected, but they're frequently not powerful mm -hmm. voices in politics. How about the politics between the two houses? The, the House of Counselors is dominated by the LDP. The House of Representatives is, is also dominated, dominated the LD, by the LDP. LDP. How, how is that, that uh, dynamic represented in the, the different houses? Or is it, is it a mirror image? Well, until 2016, the, the House of Counselors was one of the, the binding energies between the LDP and the Komeito, the ruling coalition, because it was only in coalition with the Komeito that the LDP even had a majority in the House of Counselors. After 2016, however, the LDP by itself has a majority in the House of Reps and in the House of Counselors. So if constitutional revision, which requires two-thirds majorities, mm -hmm. is not a problem for you, and you just want to run a government of your own party, that possibility now exists for the LDP. And that's one of the reasons why the Komeito doesn't get really excited or, or difficult or ever get you know, too because passionate. they don't want to tip that. They don't want to, yes. they don't, because they know that the LDP could just say, you don't, what, you, you're upset with something? Yeah. Well, well, we'll go our own there's way. There's the door. There's the, the, <laughs> the, the door's open, leave. Yep. Uh, so there's that dynamic between the two members of, two, two parts of the ruling coalition that, has existed only after the 2016 election. From going back from 2016 to 1989, the LDP was not ever by itself the uh, the party in majority, and it always had. That's when it became a party that suddenly had needed friends, mm -hmm. needed coalition partners. It and it was so desperate. You know, it joined hands with the socialists in 94, 95. Uh, to in order to get back into power after being thrown out in the 93 election. So they, you know, that, that was always the House of Counselors' main role was to bind together mm -hmm. th these coalitions. It's no longer got that function. And so it, there is, we will be seeing if without that, that binding, whether indeed those two parties will continue to be in coalition or will the Komeito just suddenly feel it is so weak as compared to its uh, partner that it, it's as if it weren't even there. Okay, well it's also um, interesting to point out that the difference between the House of Counselors and the House of Representatives from a visual aspect is that the House of Counselors is where the emperor comes in to open the house. That's right. So the number of seats that are in the, in the, the, the mosh pit, so to speak, are greater than the number that are in the House of Representatives, but that's to accommodate all of the people who are coming in when the emperor comes in to that's open the, 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 the There is the there is in fact a throne, a throne, right, in in the House of Counselors' room. So that 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 hall is is much is slightly more ornate and has a, a, a different setup. 
the, the in terms of the actual functioning of of the diet, uh, the House of Counselors, it still keeps going. The the idea of it being a break, a place where okay, we've decided something in using passions and, and partisanship in the House of Reps, let's think about it one more time. Mm -hmm. It still has that aura to it, and so it is not entirely on the sidelines. And indeed, when there is an election, uh, when the, a prime minister dissolves a diet, there's only one house. If Japan becomes a unicameral mm -hmm. state. The House of Councillors does not go away. And the House of Councillors is the permanent institution. And so it has cachet, and it's not the joke that it used to be. Before we wrap this up, Michael, the current diet building was finished in 1934. It was, after the Meiji Restoration, probably the fourth building that was built to house the, the diet complex. Mm -hmm. The first three burned down. Right. And they built this one so that it wouldn't burn down, and they spent a lot of money on building this. It took them about 15 years to build it and about 10% of the Japanese GDP to, uh, to construct it. Uh, it's a big lump of stone and it's stone from everywhere and every part. It's a public building. You can go and visit it. You if you visit. are in, in Tokyo and you want to do it, you go to the front gate and, and you, get, you can you're sign allowed, it. You're showed into the, the, the council chambers. You can apply for all kinds of access and, it, and mm -hmm. it's really quite open, very different from the situation, let's say in the United States or any place That's that, right. that, that has very high levels of security. No, it's a great place to visit for anyone coming in. One of the interesting things, when you go to the benches to, um, to look in and, and to observe the, the plenary session, for example, the seats were made for the typical Japanese body in 1934. And when you sit in them, you are so cramped, and even your Japanese colleagues are also cramped, because the, the growth that's gone on physiologically among the Japanese people since that time is so enormous. But it just indicates that also things are being kept the way they are. Mm -hmm. And, and one, in some instances, it's, it's really quite impressive. We had an incident a few years back uh, when someone was so angry at the diet uh, debate, I believe it was over collective, the collective security uh, legislation, that a, one of the persons in, in the observer gallery took off his shoes and threw them into the House of Counselors. Uh, of course, it hit Seiko Hiroshige. Uh, it, it's always going to hit him. Uh, he, he's one of my favorite characters uh, in, the, in the diet. Uh, and... Uh, they didn't outlaw shoes after that. No, no, but no, they didn't do that. They didn't. They didn't put a shoe ban. You don't have your shoes uh, checked beforehand. That that the people realize. Okay, that was a one-off. Uh -huh. We don't have to go into paranoid, psychotic fear mode. Uh, and so, yeah, go to see the diet. The House of Counselors, one of two houses of the Japanese diet. Please stay tuned to our next episode.